Hey everyone, today I'm going to be breaking down seven common dash lines that you'll often see when you're playing the deck, some common hands that you'll see throughout the game, and then knowing what they can do, how much damage they can output, and then the amount of resources you actually need to pull them off. Because dash cards can often all kind of look the same sometimes, it's really hard to recognize certain hands and when hands are a lot stronger than others, so I thought it'd be helpful if we just quickly break it down. So we're going to be starting from the least complex lines to the most complex lines and all these hands today are going to be simply using a blue and only going off of four card hands with the one exception being the more complex line at the very end of the video. Kicking it off, we're going to have red throttle and a blue. Uh, that represents eight damage because you can put a counter on your Plasma pistol. You can then boost the throttle and then you can shoot the pistol for two. You just subtract one number if you have different copies of throttle. So if you have a yellow throttle, it's you know five damage, so you do seven. And if it's a blue, you do four. So that's the other way you can evaluate these two is just know what the top end is if you have the red attacks and then just simply subtract one or two based on the color pitch of the attack card. The second is going to be a blue in your hand, a red payload, or any version of payload really, and just a zero to 60, either zero to 60 or zipper hit. Uh, this hand can represent sometimes up to 15 damage with six of it being dominate. Another clean line you can do is you can break a Lyth gauntlet. You can play a zero to 60 or a zipper hit, and then you can play payload and the payload will actually gain the plus two from Goliath gauntlet because the previous two attacks were not two cost or more. So they do not trigger the Goliath gauntlet. So that can be a fun way to close out games. Another somewhat more complex line it's still very simple is just utilizing Tekla Foundry Heart to generate resources and play two attacks in the same turn you normally wouldn't be able to. So you can keep a three card hand with two red throttles and a blue pitch. And even though the hand costs four, you can actually play it because you can pay two and play the first throttle. You can then close the chain, activate Tekla Foundry Heart. Assuming that you have the ratios or you hit two Mechanologist cards, you will get two resources back and then you can play the second throttle. So that's a three card hand that can do 12 damage at its best. Another somewhat more contingent line at least contingent on your opponent not blocking is going to be a blue a red combustible courier and then maybe something like a zipper hit or a zero to 60. so you can play the combustible courier assuming it hits for four you can then play the red zipper hit for eight and so that's a 13 damage hand off of a three card hand which is actually better than the previous one the two red throttles um so that's another you know pretty high damage line that you can pull off a less aggressive hand but something that maybe dash players should still know about is two t-bones of any color followed up by Meganetic Shockwave. Assuming that you don't break the chain and you just have a blue, uh, you don't need anything else to do this. The two T-Bones will actually pull two of your opponent's equipment off the chain uh, as they're required to block them. And T-Bone does count itself when you boost because the boost is an additional cost of the payment. So when T-Bone is on the table attacking your opponent and the ability triggers, there is already a boosted card on the combat chain. It reads itself. So if you play two T-Bones in a row and you do all this without closing the chain at any point, then your opponent has to put two equipments out to the first two T-Bones and the Meganetic Shockwave because there are two boosted cards on the combat chain. So that's a really complicated way of saying that two t-bones and a magnetic shockwave clears your opponent's entire equipment suite so they'll be forced to block with all four equipments on that turn this is obviously very strong into decks like lexi or sometimes ninja decks with uh, blade break and cards that they don't want to lose so if you do this very simple four card hand of any any color on the t-bones it doesn't matter you're mostly doing this for the effect and not the damage then you can wipe all of lexi's equipment so new horizon tunic perch grapplers and with ninjas you can take tunic and mask them momentum and then there's other decks where you can pull this off into so in rune blades you can take maybe like creepers and tunic and you can even force uh blocks out of cards like arcanite skullcap or grasp of the arcanite so this is a pretty high power line if you're playing into decks that require equipments to really push their power level however maybe you shouldn't really always plan for this hand to work out all the time but it is easy to recognize like two t-bones and magnetic shockwave gets your opponent's entire equipment suite and so yeah it's, it's a good one to know moving on to a slightly more complex line we can actually include an equipment just to sort of understand how we can manipulate the combat chain during the turn. So in this one, we're going to break a Lyth Gauntlet before we attack. And then off of a blue, we're going to play a red zipper hit, which comes in for five because it does not meet the requirement of Goliath Gauntlet. So it does not get the plus two. Then we come in for five and we play red zero to 60 for four, which also does not meet the requirement. So now we've done nine damage so far. And then we're going to end the combat chain with Overblast, the red one. And so it sees two cards on the combat chain that are boosted, so it gets plus two, so it comes in for seven, but it actually meets a requirement for Goliath Gauntlet, so even though we used it at the beginning of the chain, it gets a plus two. Now the reason for that is simply because we want all of it to be loaded onto the Overblast, but we don't want to close the chain to use the Goliath Gauntlet, because if we break the Goliath Gauntlet in between this combo, 
we actually lose damage on the overblast because any cards that are already boosted on the chain are no longer on the chain. So with this line, you do a total of nine damage from the overblast plus another nine damage from the other two cards that we played. So this hand does 18 damage. So if you see a blue and you have Goliath Gauntlet and you have red zipper hit, you know, red zero to 16 and overblast, you can tell yourself this hand does 18 damage. However, if we play the first two cards and then we use Goliath Gauntlet and then we play Overblast, Overblast only comes in for seven because the two boosted cards are no longer on the chain, which means that the hand only does 16 damage. So that's a good thing to know in terms of na navigating the combat chain and how to maximize the damage on a lot of these dash cards where boosted attacks matter. For this final hand here, this one is gonna require a little bit more setup. This is gonna involve investing a little bit in a previous turn to pay off on a future turn. So the investment in this turn is going to be arsenaling any zero cost boost attack or maximum velocity, as well as putting a counter on your plasma barrel shot, which requires two resources, a fairly easy thing to pull off. And then off of a blue pitch, we can play three zero cost boost attacks. So for this example, we have two red zero to 60s and a red T-bone. So all three of these together do a total of 11 damage and then since we have three resources in hand it can also be a yellow pitch we just need two we can then play maximum velocity from wherever from either from hand or from arsenal for 10 so at that point our hand is 21 damage and then we can actually while the chain is still open we can break our achilles accelerator and then we can actually use the plasma barrel shot while the combat chain is still open and we can actually deal four because we have three boosted attacks on the combat chain and it hasn't been closed. So you can do this as like a really big finisher because now this hand does 25 damage. So hopefully this was helpful. I can make this a, a small series and maybe break down a couple other lines. I just want to make it quick and digestible, trying to give people some idea of like the amount of damage that their hands can do and also sort of flexible lines. So you can add plus two onto a lot of these hands if you're running Goliath Gauntlet or you can add plus two two on a lot of these if you're using Tecla Pounder and it's the first three activated triggers on it. So this is just a quick way to start breaking down how much damage these hands can do. And that way it might help you read when you want to block or when you want to just go for the kill when you're trying to swing the game in your favor. And it's probably mostly helpful if you're on one of the more aggressive lists. Regardless, I just want to put this information out here. Let me know if you enjoyed it and you would like to see more. Thank you for watching.